I have tried recording this video probably two or three times now. So the first time I recorded this, I got about a third of the way into editing it. Hated it, did not like it. I was stumbling over and I just felt like I was not knowing what the fuck I was talking about. Despite taking like several weeks to research and put together this video, like the script for it. So anyways, here's my uncovered face. I'm still a little swollen. I do have a little bit of bruising still. They ignore it because I don't care because I feel good enough to record. I feel like I look good enough to record. So what? ever. I just wasn't having it and I feel very scatterbrained because of it. I feel a little out of practice, I guess. I'm still dipping my toes into actual video essays, so y'all please bear with me. I'm trying. I'm really trying to get more comfortable in front of a camera. <laughs> when I made my r slash true rate me video at the beginning of November, I didn't expect anything to really sort of come of it. Like the you know? You get what I'm saying. Because I don't spend a lot of time on like Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, X, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to call it Twitter because that's what it is and everybody knows what you're talking about. What the fuck is X? What is X? Seriously, it's like the dumbest fucking name. Anyways, um, I don't spend a ton of time on TikTok and I don't have those other social medias. Rarely am I on Snapchat. Slight side tangent. Do you know you can have followers on Snapchat? I had no idea that was a thing. And then I was looking for an old picture to send to one of my friends. I saw I had like 200 something followers. That's crazy. That's weird. I don't like that. Anyways, because of this, I did not find out about this. I'm going to call it a format tentatively. I don't want to call it a trend, but it's looks maxing. I didn't find out about looks maxing until pretty recently, and the more I looked into it, because it had a certain je ne sais quoi, a certain familiarity to it, and the more I looked into it, the more I went, this is r slash true rate me and the toxic beauty standards of the early 2000s and white supremacy. That is one big pile of shit. Now, that might sound dramatic. I swear to God, it's not. I swear on my mouse's grave at my old house that it is not dramatic. <laughs> that is a little dramatic. Before I get more into this, I wanted to say that I am not going to be going into depth about some of the things I talked about in my r slash true rate me video. It would be very redundant and add an extra 10 to 15 minutes of something I have already talked about. I would recommend watching that video or just at least the video essay part of it that I put in the middle while we were waiting for the results. I define some of the terms used in r slash true rate me in the subreddit as well as in the looks maxing community as well as some of the history behind it and why I think that this is the return of r slash true rate me. You know, it's just, it's, it helps you understand the beauty scale that these two places use. So, okay, sure, it's promotional or whatever, but genuinely, I think you should give that part a watch at least. Uh, link in the description as always, as well as the Google document link for all my references. Instead of putting all my sources in the description, I'm just going to link a Google document where you can see all of them. It's viewer only. You cannot comment or edit it. And oh yeah, God, this is gonna be a complete shit show. I'm just warning you now, there's gonna be talk about body dysmorphia, about beauty standards, racism, sexism, incel culture. <laughs> Can you tell I'm like so happy that I decided to research this topic? <laughs> Please keep your arms and legs inside of the bullfuckery at all times until the video has come to the outro. Thank you very much. Let's, let's just get into this. What is looks maxing, you might be asking? So from the get-go, my initial understanding was that it's the attempt at being as attractive as possible, like being as physically attractive as possible, mainly targets men more than women. But in my eyes, the way that I saw it originally was like men doing the amount of beauty aesthetic rituals that women do. But like now it's being promoted as like this thing. But from my research, I was indeed correct about that from the website itself. And yes, there is a looks maxing website. I'm just as surprised as you are. <laughs> 
it says in the start here tab that it's about becoming the best version of yourself. I had assumed that it was looks only, but from the cheat sheet I downloaded after very hesitantly and unwillingly giving them my email, which I need to unsubscribe from. <laughs> it's a requirement. I found that it talks a little bit about mental health and discipline, but more along the lines of your mental health will improve and all your problems will go away once you are X. The same type of mentality that so many of us women had. I had this growing up as a kid and as a teenager, I thought, oh, my life will just be so much better if I am this. Um, I also found the subreddit r slash how to be hot because reddit plays such a big part of this for some reason and it drives me bonkers. <laughs> and there was a post from three years ago because this isn't new, looks maxing's not new and I'll explain it later, that entailed the different types of looks maxing. Jackpot. So this user who I can't properly cite because they either got sniped by reddit or they self-deleted goes over the eight apparent different types of looks maxing that they came up with at least but it seems like that post is sort of being taken as like gospel so I'm gonna run through these kind of quick just the first four because the other ones are pretty self-explanatory and I'm mostly gonna be talking about the first one and a little bit of the second one. First is soft maxing described as inexpensive and doesn't change after you get ready for bed at the end of the day. Think hairstyles, makeup, nail polish, clothing. It did mention hair dye as one of the things Things, but in my experience, I would put hair dye not in soft maxing. I would actually put it more in the next category, which is called hard maxing. So this is described as the bones of looks maxing. Literally, it's stuff that changes your bones and flesh. Think semi-permanent, semi-invasive procedures to the permanent cosmetic surgeries like fillers, microdermal, laser hair removal, rhinoplasties, things like that. Uh, next, number three is health maxing. This user says improving your diet, getting more sleep, drinking more water, and also mental health to reduce stress. Things like eating food that's more nutritionally dense for you, yoga, skincare, that sort of stuff. Number four is social maxing. This is very odd to me, but this is emphasized as being one of the more important parts of LM. I'm gonna call looks maxing LM so I don't have to keep saying looks maxing. It's basically, quote unquote, helps improve how other people perceive you and treat you. The user then goes on to talk about their experience being better when they changed some of their behavior and even saying, quote, if you're a Becky or even a fem cell, that it can offer help. It's manipulating the public perception of you. Yeesh. Five, six, seven, and eight are personality maxing, mentality maxing, money maxing, and mental health maxing. I feel like those are pretty self-explanatory. The one thing that I will mention about personality maxing that I thought was weird, again, I think this whole thing is odd, so, you know, is that it was described as social maxing's less manipulative little sister, which is a very strange way of describing something. Okay. I felt like I had hit the jackpot when I found this post because it really reaffirmed my hypothesis, my theory, if you will, about the origins of looks maxing in incel culture and how those two became very quickly linked and tied uh, because then it ties into eugenics, Eurocentric beauty standards, specifically white Eurocentric beauty standards because unfortunately, for some reason, big noses, even though they are very common in a lot of white European ethnicity are not considered attractive. Hmm. Anyways, uh, it's kind of a dog whistle. I'll explain that a little bit later. So now that we know what it is, what entails looks maxing? Like, what do you do to max out your looks? What do you focus on? What are the problems and solutions? The funny and terribly ironic thing about this is that a lot of these are just basic hygiene things, rich basic hygiene rituals a person should be doing in the first place. Like you should be doing this on a regular basis. You should be bathing, hair washing, and I put those two separately because you know, people have different hair types that require different washing schedules, so I'm not gonna put those two together. Washing and ironing your clothes, which a lot of people don't iron their clothes, I do wearing deodorant, having a simple skincare routine, signature scent. There's a lot of other things, but those were some of the biggest ones that were on the cheat sheet and in the articles on the Looks Maxing website. I feel so old talking about this. I feel like a like an ancient crone being like, you young people. 
So things like bad skin, bad hair, and I put those in quotes because acne is normal. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with having acne. I have acne. I don't know if you can tell. I don't think you can because the lighting covers a lot of things. I'm not wearing any makeup, but I do have acne. I have acne scarring across here. I have freckles on my nose. I have some acne. Normal. That's completely normal. But anyways, a lot of these things are just kind of fixed by being hygienic. Like, a lot of the LM stuff is not just to improve how a guy feels about himself, but also to attract romance partners. I'm gonna be specifically talking about the cis heterosexual men because that seems to be the biggest community demographic of looks maxing. Of course, women are, but they seem to be more of a minority in here from what I have found. I could be wrong about that, and please let me know if I am, because I am always looking to learn more and to be better. You know, if I miss something, please tell me. Please, please, I love to hear it. Like, in my personal experience, I have told so many guys that they just had good grooming habits, good regular basic grooming habits, their chances of whatever it is they're trying to do, the success rate of that, increases by like 10. I'm telling you. Specifically, if they want to get a girl, they want to get a girlfriend. If you just smell good, you know, you look like you take care of yourself, your chances of getting a date or, you know, attracting someone, only like two dudes ever really listened to me and they both got girlfriends within six months of them changing. So, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> so, with looks maxing in particular, what I found was that it really just kind of follows the whole golden ratio symmetry with numbers bullshit. I swear I'm not trying to be pushy about it, but if you watch my r slash true rate me video, I talk about a couple things like that. I do explain things like the canthal tilt, facial dimorphism, phrenology, and other things within that video. Again, I know it comes off as promotional, but this is sort of like a part two to that video in a way. So you can't really understand part two without watching part one. Just saying. So in my research for this, I came across a video from a channel named Pygmy. Very sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name. He did a video called I did looks maxing every day for 30 days and he focused on a couple things that I wrote down specifically. Hair, specifically hairline growth. He made a cream or something where he put it on specific parts of his hairline every single day, tracked the progress of that. Skincare, fitness, especially calisthenics. Yes, calisthenics. I can't pronounce that word. Grooming, eyebrows, haircuts, hair styling, hair washing, that kind of thing. And cheekbones, jaw, and maxillary structure. Now, that one specific aspect of LM just intrigues me. It's like watching a car crash. I cannot take my eyes off of it, even though it's terrible. I am going to hyper focus on jawlines the way that the LM community does too. There's this like microscope on jawlines, cheekbone structure, and just kind of like the lower half of the face. The nose, not so much. It's That's not as big of a worry for men as it is for women. Stupid. That's an opinion, right? A weak jawline Line is seen as undesirable as it supposedly causes a visual facial imbalance and from what we know about all this imbalance is poison asymmetry is seen negatively it is the devil i mean i think they would rather you like burn off part of your face than have a weak jawline even though most people are like naturally asymmetrical by nature and don't have like the strongest jawline ever according to the canadian board of medicine the ideal gonial angle, which is the angle of your mandible or your lower jaw, for both men and women ranges from 120 to 130 degrees. It gives you enough of a prominent look without making you look like a mouth breather if it is larger. Jesus Christ. So, what's my gonial angle? <laughs> Let me get my protract. So what is the solution to this? If you ask the average looks maxer the first line of non-permanent or soft maxing, hope you've been paying attention to know what that means, as the Reddit user had so eloquently put it, is mewing. Also, Pygmy mentioned mewing in the jawline structure part of the, that video. Mewing is the idea and practice that readjusting or correcting jaw posture can fix a weak jawline. It's an an eponym of John Mew, who was an orthodontist that had his license revoked for essentially pushing the bullshit take that mewing can fix not only a weak jawline, but also other cranial, I don't remember, I don't know what it's called, but basically it can fix like bone structure problems in your face. It's not true. 
he didn't actually come up with this idea, he just made it popular um, because that's what an eponym is, is just when something is named after the person that made it popular instead of the original inventor or creator of it. This guy is like the Andrew Wakefield of dentistry. <laughs> So anyways, mewing is putting your tongue to the roof of your mouth and like sucking on it to create like a negative pressure in between the roof of your mouth and your tongue. It's also been described as swallowing your tongue, which is to me is a strange way of describing it, but sure, if that's what gets the point across and makes you understand, all right, fine, whatever. It's been debunked by countless orthodontics and plastic surgeons such as Katherine Chang, a board certified plastic surgeon who talked about it in this TikTok. Mewing is cap. You can see here that it shows that the bone shortens and rotates. This does not happen. As an adult, your bone is fully formed. This requires jaw surgery. However, placing the tongue at the roof of the mouth does lift floor mouth content so you look better in photos. However, this is only temporary. I wish mewing worked, but it doesn't. Mewing to me is like sucking in your stomach. Like the effects are temporary and you can visually see them, but as soon as you stop doing it, like it goes away. It's not, it, you're not going to get anything else out of it. Completely temporary. Another thing that Pygmy mentioned in his video to fix a weak jawline that he came across was chewing on really tough or chewy foods uh, like a steak or he said a whole chicken breast and then chewing on it at least 30 times before swallowing. Good god. <laughs> I'm like directly quoting his video here. There's also this jawline ball thing that you can chew on that I've seen. Picture that I found was not the one I was thinking of but it is one that I, apparently is very popular on TikTok. Supposedly gives you a better jawline with like in a week or so. I'd buy it but only only to chew on it, to be honest, not for like chewing for a jawline. Those silicone straws that you chew on, that's what I would be getting it for. <laughs> I chew a hell of a lot of gum, so maybe I should get one for the purpose of having something to chew on. Also, chewing gum was the last thing that he talked about in his video as well. I, I don't know why I wouldn't think of that. The interesting thing is that I was given a lot of shit for my jawline when I was a kid. I have a more square face, which you probably can't really tell right now because I'm still kind of swollen, but I've always had a stronger jawline. I've always had a more square face and I got made fun of it a lot because it was seen as a more traditionally like masculine facial shape or whatever the fuck that means. So now seeing it be something that people want uncomfortable very strange like now i like my face shape and i like my jawline and i like my cheekbones which you still can't fully see because again i'm still so oh yeah you can see there's a little bit of that bruising a little bit of that bruising my brow ridge also slightly protrudes a little bit more which is another traditionally or traditionally associated masculine facial shape which fine i don't care anymore anyways this whole lm thing on jawlines and what the Reddit post said, I also want to explain how this shit isn't new and is really just like a round two of r slash true rabies pragmatic guidelines. So I'm telling you, you gotta watch the first video. So as we know, most of that subreddit's beauty standards are based on white beauty epigenetic standards with a huge origin in racism, eugenics, and phrenology. So as I mentioned earlier, that Reddit post mentions the term Becky and Femcell. And honest to God, I fucking knew it. I knew Lux Maxing was related to incel culture. Uh, so for a little TLDR, incel stands for involuntarily celibate, usually used to describe men. You guys know Femcell is the female equivalent of it. So this began as an online forum by a woman named Alana in 1997 and it was called Alana's Involuntary Celibacy Project. This was a forum meant for late bloomers, you know, the people frustrated with their dating problems, being a virgin. She said that it was never supposed to be a negative thing. It was never a negative thing. It was supposed to be a safe place for people to express how they were feeling about it. People that maybe didn't have quite as much luck in the dating realm. But uh, over time, as all good things do, it got hijacked by men. <laughs> 
According to the BBC article, the woman who founded the incel movement, which is an interview with Alana, Elliot Rogers' 2014 Isla Vista shooting and stabbing spree was outlined by a 141-page document lamenting his virginity, being lonely, being rejected by women, and hating women. Then, quote-unquote, in April 2018, a man named Alec Manassian posted on Facebook, the incel rebellion has already begun. All hail the super Supreme Gentleman Elliot Roger. That man then drove a van down a street and killed 10 people shortly after. I remember watching Roger's video called Retribution. I was 13 when the killings happened and I was 17 when the guy drove the van. And I just remember being so deeply disturbed by what happened and I wasn't aware that people could hate women that much. And I actually read Roger's manifesto for this video for some research. Oh my god. Oh my fucking god. I also read the alleged manifestos of the Buffalo grocery store shooter Peyton Gendron. I don't know how to pronounce his last name and I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck about a racist ass man like him. And the apparent manifesto of Dylan Roof. Absolutely vile and horrific things. Um, getting back on track, these manifestos tie- it ties incel culture into racism, white supremacy, and sexism. Uh, if you want to torture yourself, I did put those in the reference. But yeah, Alec- Manassian's post is the one that really tied incel culture into hating women, and it's really only picked up since. So here we are in 2024, only a mere four days into it, and the incel culture that has evolved in the almost 30 years after Alana, who left the community in 2000, is now linked to sexism, white supremacy, and eugenics. What a shame. Because in the article that I was reading, it sounded like it was a genuinely good place originally in terms of how absolutely wild the internet was in the late 90s and early 2000s. So there are some key terms used in this culture that I personally think of as dog whistles and like the most flaming crimson scarlet flags you will ever see in your entire life. Red flag is not cutting it. These are like the bonfires in Mulan that they light on the wall when they saw the Huns. And these four terms, if there's anything that you need to understand about the looks maxing community aside from all of the technical epigenetic terms like cancel tilt and stuff it's gonna be chad stacy becky and virgin <laughs> fourth person doesn't even get a name it's just virgin <laughs> so chad's and stacy's of the world are the target of hatred and admiration of incels the female equivalent like i said they are the desirables of the human world think of that meme that's like this is what the peak male or female form looks like, but like unironic in this community. It's crazy. There's also a hierarchy. Underneath a Stacy is a Becky, who is described as moderately attractive by the incel wiki. No, I'm not making that up either. You can look it up on the reference document. <laughs> uh. We got the terms. We got the times. What does this all mean for the future? I think it's gonna get a hell of a lot worse before it gets a hell of a lot better. The pendulum is not done swinging one way yet because then it's gonna start swinging back. Salem Tobar made a great video on this and she brought this point up in her Toxic Beauty Standards Are Back and It's Gen Z's Fault that many of the younger Gen Z subscribe to the very toxic beauty standards and just awful trend cycles when it comes to that, especially with the rise of TikTok. I am an older Gen Z. 2001 babies, rise the fuck up. Make some no- Ow. The obsession with beauty and aesthetics, and I'm referring to the definition of that second word as concerned with beauty or the appreciation of beauty, is absolutely devastating younger Gen Z. Again, I'm an older Gen Z, and I know that I would not have survived having TikTok back in high school as it is now. Like, I was fighting demons with that Instagram Instagram baddie era and the Tumblr grunge era, I would not have survived. Mm-mm. Mm -mm -mm. Shanzir also made an insanely fantastic video. It was a deep dive into beauty obsession and they're impeccable as always. They are two 
of my favorite video essayists on YouTube. I've tried saying that like four times and I can't say it. Um, so I sincerely hope this looks maxing shit goes away or just dies down enough to where I don't have to fucking see it all the time. I really do. I remember being so obsessed with my appearance and that just like left me exhausted. It is exhausting having to care about what you look like all the time. I cannot fathom having the energy for it right now, like outside of basic hygiene. I curled my hair a day later than I said I was going to, but like now I just don't care to do it. It's so difficult to live our lives with how insidious beauty standards are. I don't fault anyone for falling into the ideology because that's what they want you to do. They want you to be insecure and I I don't blame men especially for falling into this because their standards, while not as ever-changing and rigid as women's, is still hurtful to them regardless. And it just, this like will be the death of people. Like truly will be the death of us all. And it already has been the death of countless people. It, only, it almost took me out at one point. Like I don't want to get preachy or anything, but this shit is like, it's scary how easy it is to fall into it. It took me less than a minute to find the how to be hot subreddit. It did not take long and finding self-confidence is so hard oh it's so difficult and it's hard to maintain that self-confidence too especially when like you're young and you want to fit in like people won't ever admit to it but they want to fit in and there's nothing wrong with that it's totally okay with wanting to fit in there's nothing wrong with wanting attention i'm getting preachy anyways you didn't ask for this i'm gonna give you a little bit of advice get the fuck off of social media get off social media that has short form content as its main platform driver like TikTok, Instagram. Honestly, I don't know about Snapchat. I just find that not having Snapchat makes my life easier, but Twitter, all those get off of there or don't spend as much time on them. And if you are going to spend time on it, purposely shift your algorithm to not include beauty content. I'm so like dead serious about this. Uh, even on YouTube, if you purposely don't focus on beauty and like looks and stuff, your life's going to be so much better. It's going to be so much better. Your looks are not the end all be all. There is so much more to you than whatever your meat sack looks like. That sounds terrible when I say it like that. I'm a confident person, but like when I do get insecure, what I do, I turn off my phone and then like I'll go grocery shopping or something and it helps to just see people, normal people, average people, and there's nothing wrong with being average either. Genuinely, I don't think we're supposed to see this many above average looking people. I don't think we're meant for that. <laughs> like, I don't think we're meant to receive all of this information either. I think that it's very damaging to us. Anyways, but going out and seeing regular people in normal clothing, just looking like people. Oh, it is so helpful. Even if it doesn't get rid of the insecurity, it does shift you to a more neutral place. Because as soon as you realize that people out in public really don't give a fuck about what you look like, oh, your life becomes so much easier. Oh, it becomes so much nicer to just exist, I promise. I'm definitely rambling a bit and I'm getting a little preachy again. Very sorry. No, I'm not sorry about that. But this was very much an interesting a video to research for and I'm just grossed out by social media again. As I always am. As I always, always am. And with that, I would just like to say thank you so incredibly much for 400 plus subscribers. I think right now I've got like over 440. That's crazy. That's insane. I posted it on the community tab, but I just wanted to verbally say it in a video, have it in some kind of immortalization because you never really truly delete anything on the internet anyways. It might not seem like a lot, but imagine like 400 plus people following you when you decide to like leave your house. That's, in that's crazy. That's insane. I'm also so grateful and lucky that I've been received received so nicely in the comments from y'all. I, I cannot get over how incredibly kind you are to me, especially when you say I'm well-spoken, especially on my rambling series, my two cents in a seat where it's completely unscripted and I go on like a million different tangents. That's crazy. Thank you so much. That's so crazy. I, I'm like so over the moon about that. Also, if I started making baking videos, would y'all watch those? Because I love baking and talking shit and I bake gluten-free because I'm celiac. So maybe I can show y'all some of my favorite things to bake, some of the easy recipes that I bake. I just made Irish soda bread today and I also I also adapted Julia Child's Le Marquis cake, which is her chocolate sponge cake with her chocolate butter icing. I made that for Christmas. Magnifique. So good. And it was all gluten free. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. And remember, get off your phone, go outside, get some water, and have a great day, night, spring, summer, fall, winter, wherever you are. And I will see you all in my next video. Bye!